Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In previous video tutorial, we had discussed about the J Tomcat JDBC connection pooling and that was just a theoretical discussion, right? So in this video tutorial, we'll see an example uh, of web-based web -based application which I'm going to run on the Tomcat and there I will show you how to configure uh, Tomcat JDBC connection pool, right? So this is the web-based application. This project contains a lot of files. So, so that's why I have done coding offline. And uh, I'm going to run first of all this project and show you uh, how it works. And then uh, I will show you how behind the scene uh, JDB, uh, Tomcat JDBC uh, connection pool works. So here, first of all, we need to set the database. So I'm using JDBC pool DB database and just creating this table if this table does not exist if this database does not exist then that will be created if this table is not existing then that will be created if that exists then that's not a problem so i'm going to copy this db script i go to the mysql workbench and here i'm going to run this db script so let's select and run this db script and refresh this database and here you can see this table has been created and there is no as of now there is no records in this table now first of all i'm going to run this program i'll show you i'm going to run in the debug mode and all debug point i'm going to disab disable as of now so i'm going to disable this sorry so first of all i would disable the debug point uh, let me uh, press f8 to cancel all threads so here you can see this UI better I can open this UI uh, in external browser and I can show you this is the project and there is no record in the database that's why this is not showing I want to add a new record into uh, uh, in database using this GUI so let's say Java programming and uh, suppose writer is the James Gosling and let's try to add and cost I'm gonna specify 800 and let's save this this has been saved into the database if you go and refresh see this is added in the database so create operation basically we have performed and let's add some more records I would say it first java this is the book name and author name i'm going to specify kathy shera and cost i'm going to specify 800 and let's save it so second book i added let's add third book as well so thinking sorry 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 thinking in so thinking in java and i would give the name bruce ekel and let's say this is 1200 cost and let's have added three weeks three books over here and if you want to perform some addition add it so add it also you can perform you can uh, 870 java programming by uh, james gosling right now you can see the cost is 800 if you save and refresh then all record will be so this see this is if you want to delete some record so thinking in java bruce equal so if i want to delete it then we can of course delete if you go and refresh so all kind of basically crowd operation just i'm performing from the uh, gui right we have created a ui very nice ui so it's a very small application and very pretty straightforward application let me show you so here i have created we talked about the db script now if you go to the web content then we have a three jsps so first is jsps uh, book form dot jsp and responsibility of this jsp is to add a new book by using the url i mean url pattern and this is 
to addition a new book when the user clicks on this then this url pattern will be uh, collected in our servlet so here is my servlet from do post just i'm making call to the do get and here just i'm collecting the action if action is new then this method is going to call and this gsp will be forwarded to a user where user can enter the book information and that uh, that uh, will be submitted to the user right so now user will submit that internally this insert book will be called and this will collect all information that will set into the book docker book book entity class so this is the entity class which contains uh, the uh, four constructor that's my business requirement that's why i have created four constructor and public getter method so that's the entity class so here uh, i'm just creating an instance of book and populating this value through constructor and i'm passing this book to create book in service layer so if you go to the this call delegate delegates to the service layer and from service layer just i'm calling the doll layer and book is getting inserted into the database and here you can see i have used a uh, database connection so here you can see what i'm calling in dvutil i'm calling get data source and here you can see jndi lookup service name i have given something like this so this is your jndi name java naming directory interface name and this has to be configured somewhere in the xml file and this jndi name should uh, prefixed with this right java colon slash comp dot env and after that we'll have to specify the jndi and this is jndi i have configured in meta nf we will have to create a file is called context.xml and here i have context start and close and between that you will have to configure a resource tag and resource tag will have to specify all attributes which we had discussed in the earlier video tutorial so this is our jndi name through jndi name this service we have registered on the server and we can get so this information will be populated into the data source right and here you can look up this jndi by calling this lookup methods so first of all you will have to create the object of context and uh, context is an uh, interface so you will have to uh, create an ob uh, object of its implementer assigned to this you call the lookup method you pass the jndi the service name and if this is not null then you will have to type cast into the data source right if you get the null then you will have to throw some error right and same to this data source which is we have created in the static block this is going to return to the caller pretty straightforward so this method i'm calling from the doll layers right to get the connection in every method of doll and once we get the connection from the uh, jndi using data source so that's makes use of the uh, connection pool so once uh, i have used uh, try with resources over here right so we get the connection from connection we create the prepare statement we set the values for all placeholder then we call the execute method if this returns true this returns number of uh, record affected by this query and this is greater than zero that i am returning the uh, true or false value based on the operation if this operation is success uh, then this is going to return true else false value will be returned so you can see and once this operation will be finished then we have used try with resources so connection and prepare statement will be closed and once you close uh, this will be closed automatically and once uh, connection will be closed then that will return to the connection pool right and every operations list of books basically i'm selecting all books from the database so here i have taken connection from the data source itself so this of the method this kind of method already we have discussed so delete book update book uh, get book by id and all these are the methods uh, pretty straightforward and these methods so basically we have a ui so calling we are calling like that when we call on the add book then new will be the action name that will be collected in the uh, this servlet class right so action name will be new and this method will be invoked like that if you want to insert new book, book then action will be insert and insert book will be uh, executed if none of the action is matching in the switch case then default will be called that is list all books right this will fetch all book information from the database so from control controller we are making call to the uh, 
service layer so if you see from controller we are making call to the service layer from service to doll layer so this is the flow like this and why we have a service layer if we, we want to implement some kind of business logic over here that's why we have a uh, service layer between controller and doll layer right and uh, i have created this sublet and this sublet i have configured in the web.xml as well so here i have configured like servlet servlet mapping with some url pattern and i have specified the error page if some exception is arising so almost i have given the super class exception so if any exception arises then this this jsp page will be forwarded to the uh, end user and exception will be printed right so this might be not a good way to handle the exception but it's a demo project that's why i have done like this so so main, main important is this one right so now last what i would want to share with you location of this file the location with this file might be a uh, meta inf there we will have to create context.xml and you can keep but this would be the application specific this is uh, only uh, will be used by this application but if you have a multiple modules in your application then this might not be a appropriate place to uh, put this context.xml if you want to if you have, will have different uh, jndi for different modules right or uh, different application then in in that case you, you would have to enter this entry in the server context.xml or server.xml so this will be the global for all applications but here i have made this app this is uh, uh, specific to my application now there are a lot of attribute i have mentioned over here let's talk about these attributes so what is the name name is nothing but the name of the resource or name of the jndi now what about the auth auth specify authentication mechanism for the application code or can we application or container what's type type is nothing but it's a fully qualified java name expected by the web application when it performs a lookup for this resource now we have a validation query right next attribute we have a validation query it's a string uh, the sql query that will be used to validate connections from the pool before returning them to the caller right so like in mysql you can specify like select one for other database like oracle you can specify select one from dual or for like um, ms sql server you can again specify select one just like a mysql now next attribute you have all like uh, validation interval right so value of this attribute is long right avoid access validation only run uh, validation at most at this frequency time in milliseconds will have to specify if a connection is due for validation but uh, has been validated previously within this interval it will not be validated again default value is 30 seconds right so this is in milliseconds so if you divide by 1000 then 30 seconds right now next max active max active maximum number of database connection in the pool you can set minus one for the no limit now next attribute you have a uh, mean idle like so that is self-explanatory now max wait we have a maximum time to wait for a connection uh, to become available in milliseconds that in this example we have we have set a 10 seconds right 10 seconds uh, an exception is thrown if timeout is exceeded uh, you can set minus one for wait indefinitely in it now we have an initial size the initial number of connections that are created within the uh, pool is uh, pool is at its startup default value is 10 now similarly if you want to enable jmx right then you will have to uh, make it true then database username database password then database driver qualified name and finally database url so i i hope you enjoyed learning this video and this code i am going to put on the github and github location i will specify in the video description itself so uh, you can download it and run on your local machine before running this project don't forget to run first of all uh db escape on your database and after that you require a tomcat 8 or 7 to run this application right so 
even you can uh, use previous version of tomcat as well so thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial